This is a follow-up to Creating Futures with Options, where we're going to pull uh, real data uh, from uh, the futures market. So we're going to stream some real data from futures and futures options markets and test whether the relationship we discussed holds. So to remember, we can create a synthetic long futures contract by buying a call option and selling a put of the same strike price and maturity. And similarly, we can create a synthetic short position uh, in a futures contract uh, if we instead sell the call and buy the put um, on uh, same strike price and maturity. Uh, if you want a review of why this is so, uh, you can uh, view this video here. Uh, and it'll explain why uh, buying a call and selling a put will create a synthetic long futures contract and so forth. So what we're going to do in this presentation is first we're going to stream some market data, um, real market data, uh, via the Interactive Brokers API. Uh, if you don't have an Interactive Brokers uh, account uh, and you're a um, uh, finance student, a quantitative finance student, and your, your professor uses uh, the uh, Interactive Brokers in, in his or her class, uh, you can request a paper trading account uh, in that you would request it from your professor who would then request it from Interactive Brokers and uh, then you'll be able to stream this data. Uh, if your professor doesn't use this, uh, you can actually, of course, if you have a real uh, account on Interactive Brokers, you can um, stream the data from your real account. But uh, what I'd recommend here is uh, you can also request a paper trading account uh, and stream the data from there. And, and Actually, we're going to talk about implementing an algorithm uh, to possibly earn an arbitrage uh, here. And of course, you would want to do that in a paper trading account. So once we stream the data, we're going to stream data for uh, crude oil uh, futures, also futures options on crude, on crude oil CL traded on the uh, NYMEX. So then we are going to uh, build order books. Uh, because again, what we you know what we want to see is at what prices can we buy each option uh, and sell each option and, and buy and sell futures, and then uh, once we've done that, we can see if an arbitrage exists and possibly discuss uh, if an arbitrage does exist how we might um, earn that uh, arbitrage. So first thing we we need to do is pull data. So what I'm doing here is I'm using uh, the iBrokers. Uh, wrapper around uh, the Interactive Brokers API. iBrokers uh, is R, um, it is in the R language. Uh, it is a great uh, piece of software. However, uh, it is the last time it was updated was probably uh, 2014, so it is a little a little dated. Um, if you you can also do this in Python, there's some great Python wrappers around the Interactive Brokers API. If you're if you're if you're new to this and you're um, you don't have any preference between R and Python, I'd, I'd probably recommend using the Python uh, wrappers around the API because that is um, constantly updated. So, uh, but what we're doing here is we're using uh, the Interactive uh, we're using R. So we create a connection, uh, we create a, a futures contract. This is going to be uh, December uh, crude oil, uh, which is CLZ9 would be the ticker of it. Uh, and then we request market data and we stream that market data to a, a file on my, my local hard drive. Um, this is future.dat. We also create, we also do this for a call, a call option and a put option. So we uh, create a connection and stream the data for a call, create a connection, stream the data for a put. Uh, doing so is going to give us, uh, the, this is what the, the data will look like in our file on our, our, lo on our local computer. So uh, what you can see is we have a lot of information. Uh, we don't care about much of this. What we need is the bid price and the ask price. Uh, depending on our algorithm, we, we might need the bid size and the ask size, but uh, I'll just talk about bid price and ask price here. We can assume our algorithm uh, then um, will trade one contract. But so what you know, what we do from here is uh, um, I use an old Unix utility called uh, grep, and um, uh, I, I grep these uh, the files for the bid price and ask price. Then uh, it's simply a matter of formatting this into an R object of class XTS, and I have all the scripts online to do that to uh, take in this sort of data and convert it into an order book. Which, uh, so this would be uh, an or the order book in R. Uh, this is time stamped to the millisecond. So we, we you know, and uh, we have at, at every point we have bids, offers, and last. The last is just irrelevant uh, for us. Remember, the last is like if you look at a ticker, that's the last trade price. 
um, where in reality we only care about the price at which we can sell right now, which would be the bid, and the, and the price at which we can buy right now, which would be the offer. So we, we stream data for the, the future and, and the two options, and then for each future and two options we build a book, uh, and then um, we can create the synthetic long and short contract uh, in the futures. So this uh, um, this would be give us the price of the synthetic long contract, the price of the synthetic short contract. Again, if this doesn't make sense, you can watch that review video. Uh, then we can build um, an XDS object here that uh, that gives us the, the this would be the bid price uh, and the ask price in the futures market. Uh, and then this is the um, this is well this would be the ask. Uh, and the bid here. So this is the price at which we can buy in a synthetic futures contract and the price at which we can sell in synthetic futures contract. And if you note, the spread in the f in, in the actual futures is, is narrow, right? It's, it's generally much narrower where the spread here is larger. Now, uh, it's much more easy to look at this in a uh, interactive chart. So we'll take a look at, uh, so this is the chart over the time for which I streamed uh, the data. Uh, and I'll kind of zoom in on a, on a, a random part here, and we can discuss. Uh, uh, this is a good. This is a good section. So uh, what we have here is this is uh, the price of our synthetic, the price at which we can sell a synthetic futures contract. Um, this is the, and that's the sort of pink there. The purple is the price at which we can sell an actual futures contract. Uh, this kind of yellowish is the price at which we can buy an actual futures contract, and this kind of bluish is the up here, the synthetic, synthetic long is the price at which we can buy a, you know, uh, a synthetic futures contract. So if you notice, much of the time, uh, the, uh, the, you would never want to trade the synthetic, right? Because the idea is here is uh, um, if I'm going to sell a futures contract, well, obviously, I'd want to sell here at 53.45 instead of 53.39 at the synthetic price. And if I were to buy, I would want to buy at 53.46 and, and not 53.56, uh, which is the synthetic futures contract. So normally, we would want to trade the futures contract. However, for short periods, what we see here is the uh, we'd actually uh, um, prefer to trade uh, the, you know, we, we can create an, an, an arbitrage here, particularly if we, if we were to buy a, a long contract, we'd, we'd want to buy the synthetic. Now, so the question here is, um, well, it looks like, you know, there's a possible arbitrage. So what we could do is we could buy a synthetic long futures contract uh, while simultaneously uh, um, selling the uh, the actual futures contract. So what we would do is we would, to create a synthetic long futures contract, we'd buy a call and sell a put and then simultaneously sell the futures contract. And if we were to do that at this point, at this millisecond, we would uh, make three cents. So uh, we'd, 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 our synthetic futures contract, we'd buy at 53.53 and then we'd sell uh, at 53.56. However, what is not included here yet is transaction cost. So uh, keep in mind, there are three trades to get into this um, arbitrage, and then there will be three trades to get out because obviously we, we can't hold a futures contract until delivery, CL, is delivered. Uh, so it's not cash settled. So the idea here is um, when I put on this synthetic, when I try to put on this arbitrage, I, I, I buy a call, simultaneously sell a put, simultaneously uh, sell the futures contract, and when I get out, I do the opposite. So considering three, uh, six in total transaction costs, um, we, that arbitrage, you know, uh, likely won't exist. It, it may not exist. Uh, also, there is an issue of slippage here. So it, particularly given how fast high-frequency traders are. So when the, our call order hits, let's say the, the, our order to buy the call hits first, the order to, for the put may change by the time our, our, even if we submit the orders, you know, pretty much simultaneously, the, the, the price at which we sell the put may change. So uh, we may not also be able to earn this arbitrage due to slippage. That said, uh, for an undergrad or a master's student, uh, even PhD, anyone with a paper trading account, this is a great, uh, a great um, project to see if you can earn an arbitrage. So it'd be quite simple to create an algorithm that first you stream those three files uh, and then you uh, have um, and build the order books. So the, you, you have you know, these constant order books building um, and then you have an algorithm that will calculate um, this spread here and, and uh, you'd have a simple trigger if, um, 
uh, the I can buy the synthetic futures contract for you know more than five cents less than the the actual you know uh, the the bid price on the actual futures contract then enter into a trade and then uh, close it at some point so it would be a, a pretty simple algorithm in fact this will be a project for my investment students in um, spring semester so they'll create an algorithm that will try to earn this arbitrage uh, so again it, it's a great um, a great project and it's definitely uh, within your grasp to do uh, to try to earn this arbitrage and you can see there, there's multiple points where this happens most of the time it's with you know the arbitrage is impossible but but you know here again the arbitrage is briefly possible um, and so forth. Good. Have a great day.